I, I, my first book was called The Most Important Thing. And an interviewer last week said to me, well, what's the least important thing for investors? And I thought for a minute, I, I hadn't had that question before. The least important thing is the short run. Everybody's obsessed with what is going to be inflation over the next six months. What will the central bank do to, in terms of interest rates to fight the inflation? And will the changes in interest rates produce a recession? This is what everybody wants to know. And consequently, of course, what will happen to security prices in the next six months? And the answer is, it doesn't matter. That's not what matters. If you think that's, those are all short-term considerations. It's all about the next six months, three months, 12 months, whatever it might be. Number one, we really can't know much about the short run. Number two, if we develop an opinion about the short run, we shouldn't have too much confidence in it. It's, it's hard to get that right. Number three, nobody should change their portfolio wholesale in response to what they think is going to happen over the next six months. And number four, it's not the next six months isn't what matters. My clients and your clients should be investing for the next 10, 20, 30 years. And if you have a position today, what happens in the next six months is probably not going to affect the, the outcome of the next 20, 30 years. And so why does everybody care about it so much? And the answer is, it's kind of like social media. It's all around us. People are talking about it all the time. The newspapers talk about it. The, the, the talking heads on TV talk about it. And everybody gets on TV and they said, well, do you think there's going to be a recession in six months? No, I don't think so. Yes, I think they're bad. Yeah, not too bad, but pretty bad. This isn't what matters. And, and people drive themselves nuts uh, with these matters and they hurt their performance because look at, look at the markets today. The markets are well down and everybody's afraid about what's gonna happen in the next six months. And if people get out today because they're concerned about what's gonna happen in the next six months and it's gonna be very hard to to decide when to get back in because if the market goes down it's going to be because the news is terrible and and if the news is terrible most people are not going to have the intestinal fortitude to get back in and they'll probably miss a rise so you can't do that timing thing very well you might as well abstain from trying in my opinion because most of your efforts are going to be counterproductive you're going to sell because you're depressed which means prices are depressed and things are on sale. That's not the right time to sell. And you're going to buy when you feel good. And usually your good feelings will coincide with buoyant, meaning high priced markets. And that's not the time to buy. So steady as you go is a much better idea than in, out, in, out. Uh, second level thinking really is a matter of understanding that the things people are trying to do in the market. Now you can buy and hold and you don't even have to think. If, if you're a long-term investor, you're, you're uh, absolved of the responsibility of thinking and making these decisions in a short, on a short-term basis. Just buy a good portfolio. Hopefully we'll so help you select a good portfolio and hold it. You don't have to be a genius. Um, but some people want to further enhance their returns by either getting in or getting out, turning aggressive, turning defensive, or selecting securities that will do better than the rest. These are active management tactics that you can adopt if you wanna try it, not easy. And kind of, I would say, embroider around the edges. The main thrust of your return will, is gonna come from what do the markets you're invested in do in the long run? The markets and the companies. But if you want to, so, so, you know, you could buy a bunch of high yield bonds today and let's say make 8%, 9%. You say, no, I'd like to try to make 10. So you can try to get in, get out, turn aggressive, defensive, or select the ones that will do better and avoid the ones that will do worse. You can try these active management measures. But to do that, you have to think at a different level than other investors. Other investors 
on average, you're going to make nine. If you want to make 10 instead, you have to think of something they haven't thought of. You have to know something they haven't thought of. You have to think at a, at a level which is different and more sophisticated. By definition, not easy. And I have an English friend, Richard Oldfield, who wrote a book. I love the title, Simple But Not Easy. The things we're trying to do for our clients are simple, but they're not easy. You know, when I say get in, get out, turn aggressive, turn defensive, make superior uh, security selections, security company selections, I'm done. It's a simple explanation of what our goal is. It's just not easy to do because everybody's trying. And this is a competitive, this is a competitive activity investing. You know, you're, compete, you're competing to have superior returns versus everybody else. So clearly you have to do something different from what other people do and something better than what other people do. So what does that mean? It sounds like it's a lot of words. The first level thinker says, this is a good company. We should buy their securities. Most people look at it and see the same thing. But the second level thinker says, it's a good company, but it's not as good as everybody thinks. So it's going to produce a disappointment. We should sell their securities, you see? And you're just thinking through to a new level. You're thinking through to the ramifications of, of what everybody thinks. Uh, and um, I think that, uh, again, it's simple to, to explain the goal. It's just not easy to do. Uh, but uh, that's why uh, there are superior and inferior investors. That's why some people have good long-term records and some people don't survive for the long term. Uh, because it's not easy. But mm -hmm. if you want to outperform, I mean, I would like each person who's listening to say to themselves, do you want to outperform or, or are you happy with average performance? It sounds kind of un-American, but I think in the long run, average is really good enough. And if you want to be above average, which is a reasonable goal, how will you do it? And since this is a competitive activity, you're competing against all the other investors out there to, and you want to have a better record than they do on average, there has to be some advantage that you have. So I would like the listener to say, well, what is my advantage? And I think that to, to be a superior investor, you have to have what I call a knowledge advantage. You have to either know facts that the other person doesn't know. And th that's very hard today because, you know, the, in our country, the SEC, uh, um, the goal is to make sure that everybody has the same information. Otherwise, it's inside information, which could be illegal. So it's hard to get facts that the other person doesn't have on a given company or process them better. So the people in the audience should say, do I have some mental equipment that permits me to process the facts better. And clearly, in order to do that, you have to be an expert. Is it reasonable for me to think I'm an expert? Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's great to have aspiration, but your aspiration should be based on some reality, which is, I know something the other people don't know. Is that a realistic thing to say? And if not, you should you know, either settle for average or turn over your capital to somebody who does have a knowledge advantage for management. And that's what we try to do.